Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and it's one of the greatest services but one of the most underutilized services. I'm talking about VFR flight following. I find too many times students are intimidated to talk to the controllers, to ask for that favor of VFR flight following. Well today we're going to jump up to the cockpit, I'm going to take you on a cross country flight with me and show you how I pick up VFR flight following. Let's cut to the cockpit. Alrighty guys, we're up in the cockpit now, picking up VFR flight following. It's real simple. What they want to know is, first off, who we are, where we are, and where do we want to go. Well, so we're going to give them a call, uh, Orlando approach, 7159 Quebec. I'm just off the Umatilla Airport, passing through 2,000 feet, looking for VFR flight following to the Ocala Airport. That's the kind of radio we're going to give them. We're going to give them a cold call first, and a cold call sounds something like this. Let's wait to kind of find our time here. Evening Orlando approach, Skyhawk 7159er, Quebec. Skyhawk 7159er, Quebec, Orlando, clock 0353. 0353, thank you, 59 Quebec. Connection 900, 0353 in the box. I think somebody knows what I want to do. Let's listen here real quick. 0900. Connection 900, heading 290. Yeah, 290 for 900. Number 7159 of Quebec, without contact, 5 miles northwest of Matilla, out to the case 2700, what's your request? That's us, sir, 2700, request VFR flight following to Ocala, Oscar Charlie Foxtrot. Number 7159 uh, of Quebec, uh, Roger, proceed on course. On course, thank you, 5000 Quebec. So, not totally traditional on that one, I gave him a cold call, and he came back with a squat code. What typically will happen is he'll come back and he'll actually... Hey, uh, 715 Quebec, this is Orlando Approach. What do you need? You know, what's up? 515 Quebec, squad 5543. 5543 for 59 Quebec. The saga gets more and more interesting. Now he's having us 5543. Now he's having us change our squawk code. Chances are he's working on a handoff with our next center. And they say, no, I don't want 5 back on that squawk code. I got another guy in that squawk code. And they're switching our squawk code now. So the saga continues as uh, we update our transponder here. Uh, chances are he was working on maybe a handoff of the next approach controller. He says, uh, I've got somebody on that squawk code. It's too close. You need to have 5 Quebec on this squawk code. I, I was hoping to just give you a base. 5 Quebec, contact Jacksonville approach on 118.6. 118.6, 5 Quebec. Let's, let's, this is too many good teaching points all in one video here. He just asked us to contact Jacksonville Approach at 118.6. Now we've been handed off. I'm going to explain everything that's happened here in just a second. This, I thought I was going to give you a very easy VFR flight following video, but this has turned into like the ultimate what could possibly happen in a VFR flight following video. But we're getting it right now. He, he just asked us to be handed off. All right. I switched to 118.6. I now need to check in with this new controller to let him know I'm here. So I'm away from my air time here. And trust me, I'm gonna explain everything that's happened so far, but it's happened like this, as you can see. So bear with me just a moment here. Evening Jack, Skyhawk 7159 Quebec, 2.5. 7159 Quebec, Jack approach, altimeter 3006. The Lima current, plan for runway 36. 06, we'll grab Lima and plan for 36. 7159 Quebec, thank you. Okay, good evening, experimental force. So a lot, a lot just happened, um, but I think I think it'll be a little bit calm here. I do need to grab information, Lima, and listen to that, but I can explain something to you real quick because I've got uh, I've got you know 30 something miles here real quick. So here's what just happened. I requested VFR flight following. The Orlando guy goes. Sounds like VFR traffic. This guy wants something. Gives me a squat code right off the bat, which isn't totally traditional. Does it happen? Well, you just saw it happen, but not, not totally normal all the time. He gives us a squat code. Then comes back, says, I'm radar contact. Hey, what do you want? Well, this is what I want to do. I told him I want VFR flight following. I'm going to the Ocala airport. He then changes my squat code because, like I said, chances are Jack's approach. We predicted that, hey, we might be getting handed off soon. Jack's approach probably said, hey, I got a guy, you know, he's too close to a squat code. Give that 5-9 Quebec guy a new squat code. Uh, is what I'm saying making sense here. This is a lot going on. Uh, um, 
uh, and then he hands me off to Jacksonville Approach, and I check in. On a handoff check-in, um, it's simple. Uh, Jack's Approach, uh, Skyhawk 715, Dr. Beck, what altitude am I at? Some people add the words with you. With you is not actually proper verbiage to use, but it gets used uh, quite a bit, unfortunately. Um, but let's go back to how this normally would happen, because what just happened is like, I don't want to say a freak scenario, but... I see why a lot of people can shy away from VFR flight following because you get stuff like what just happened to me right now and you get overwhelmed with it all. Um, what typically happens is I cold call. Orlando Approach, Skyhawk 7159 Quebec. I wait for a second. I cold call because these are some of the busiest controllers. I want to get their attention first. So I cold call them like that. Um, after the cold call, he'll come back, Skyhawk 7159 Quebec, this is Orlando Approach, go ahead. Um, Orlando Approach, Skyhawk 7159 Quebec. I'm, you know, three miles north of the Umatilla Airport at 2,000 feet. Request VFR flight following to the Ocala Airport. And I always spell it phonetically to Oscar Charlie Foxtrot. The local controllers probably know it. But if you're ever traveling any distance, it's good to spell it out, especially on longer, you know, 100 miles plus type flights or going to a, a maybe a, a smaller airport. It's good to spell that sort of stuff um, out sometimes so you can see that. So, guys... What just happened isn't, isn't always totally normal, but now we're on VFR flight following. Remember, VFR flight following is on a time-permitting basis for these controllers. They can give it to you. They can deny it sometimes. They can say, aircraft calling, stand by, and not give it to you. I'm kind of glad the video worked out this way. I thought I was going to give you a very clean, very easy, very cookie-cutter type video for flight following, but it didn't work out that way, and... Honestly, I'm kind of glad uh, it, it didn't work out that way. You got to see everything. You got to see a handoff. You got to see a change of a squawk code. Um, you, you know, you got to see a controller kind of do some things non-standard. And, and that's how things happen sometimes, because that's a real world flying. And what I want to share with you guys is real world type flying. So anyways, guys, hope you really, really enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot. Any questions you have, any comments you have, leave me a comment down below this video on m0a.com. You know you'll get a reply from me or a member of our great team here at m0a.com. So guys, enjoy the rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya.